2022 has not been a kind year towards pastors, and unfortunately, we have another one to report to you that has passed away, and that is Tennessee Pastor Kenneth Cook. We'll get into all the details about what happened here, guys, in just a second. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, or wear the glasses because I'm blind. This incident taking place on January the 3rd, and details of the investigation are still underway at this time, but police are calling this right now a domestic dispute that occurred. Now, Pastor Kenneth Cook is was the lead pastor of Mossheim Church of God in Tennessee. He was installed there as the lead pastor in June of 2018, and from everything that I have seen on him, uh, what a great man. Uh, I mean, somebody that served in our military, along with his wife, Shannon, who's also a veteran. She served in the Air Force herself. But according to reports, what happened on the night of January 3rd, this was apparently a custody drop-off situation that took place here. And this involved uh, Pastor Cook's stepdaughter, Tegan Welch. And as reportedly what happened... Uh, Tegan's biological father was there here during this custody exchange. Uh, his name is Christopher, which, by the way, he's a veteran as well. A lot of veterans here uh, that we're talking about. But unfortunately, what happened here not only um, left Pastor Kenneth Cook dead, but also his 16-year-old stepdaughter, Tegan, and her biological father, Christopher. Um, all three had died in this incident, as police are describing this, as a domestic shooting. Now, you know, right now a lot of people are pointing to Pastor Cook's wife, Shannon. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but according to the report, they said that she survived the shooting. Was she the one that pulled the trigger? They're not saying that for sure, but, you know, being that they're calling this a domestic case, a domestic dispute that happened. This was in this was in White Pine at a pilot gas station where this exchange happened. Now I don't know if this is the site of where they would usually do the custody exchange here with Tegan or not, but this is where they met on that night. And you know I don't know if the relationship was salty uh, between the two sides or you know if they had gotten along well and something had just happened here this night. Someone had got a hold of a gun though. Uh, to where this all happened, and the fact that three out of the four involved here are dead, and the and the uh, Pastor Cook's wife Shannon is alive, um, this doesn't look good at, at all. And I obviously more information is going to come out. And of course, you know we invite anybody from the Mossheim Church of God to, if you would like to speak out about this, you can feel free to you know to let us know in the comment section about it. Our hearts going out to you at this time. Uh, for everything that you have had to endure. I mean, I've, I've seen, you know, some of the responses from some of the church members just absolutely shocked about what took place here. They never in a million years would have expected something like this to happen to their pastor, somebody that they loved and admired so much. And, you know, according to the report as well, you know, the deaths were not all at the same time. Uh, pastor Cook was apparently the last one to pass away. He had passed away in the hospital. But... Uh, for Christopher, the biological father of Tegan, uh, he had died there at the scene. Uh, Tegan had later died um, several days later in a hospital. Uh, and then finally, ultimately, like I said, uh, Pastor Kenneth Cook. Uh, Tegan was somebody who was in her school band. She was also on their bowling team. The school has absolutely just been torn apart by this news as well. 16 years old. I mean, so young. You know, kids don't ask for these things to happen to them. And they get involved in these custody cases and, you know, they don't want their families to split. I mean, I mean the large majority, unless, you know, one parent is just completely just has lost it and they're doing things they shouldn't be doing. And, and I think you get where I'm going with that. Um, but our prayers going out for just the, the entire family here, uh, that God would just bring, bring healing here uh, and also bring to justice, you know, whoever it was that's responsible that pulled the trigger here. Bring justice to that individual, whether that's Shannon, you know, Pastor Cook's wife, or if it's somebody else. And I don't know if there was other family members that were involved there as well. That could be. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see as the report comes out. But we're losing a lot of pastors. You know, in 2021, it happened. I mean, I, I couldn't even give you a number. It, the amount of reports that I did, it's just, it's crazy. It, it's a crazy high number. 
and uh, so far 2022 um, unfortunately looks to be on pace with that as well um, but look devil he he loves this sort of thing he loves to see this sort of turmoil in families and he loves it when he can take out one of God's uh, anointed so we're just going to continue to pray uh, for the entire cook family that God will be with them also for the Welch family as well uh, for everybody that knows Tegan that God will be with you and comfort you at this time as well and you know, for the majority of the time, guys, we cover, you know, end time Bible prophecy news headlines here. I talk about the need to get people to Jesus Christ in this hour. But in situations like this, it's even all the more important. You know, you never know when your last day is going to be. But when it is, whenever that time comes, you want to make sure that, you know, whether you go, you know, through the grave or whether you go, you know, when the Lord comes back in the rapture, you want to make sure that you're spending it, your eternity with him in heaven. And if you've not yet received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, well, I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to accept him into your life. You could do this prayer in your own words, but I'll give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do right off the top is to acknowledge that you're a sinner. That's something that we all are, but God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. And repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to actually turn from lifestyles or habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you though, he wipes that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, and you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you, there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I will have more on this for you guys down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Again, our prayer is going out to all the families involved here that God be with you. Everybody too, um, also at the Mossheim Church of God, that he would bring you comfort um, and also you know, bring you uh, another wonderful pastor that will lead you going forward. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.